Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning uh, and uh, pray God's richest blessings to each and every one of you. And a special welcome to all of our guests or, and family members. We pray that your time here is a blessing for you this morning. Uh, as you see, a lot of things have changed since last week. Uh, the new carpet is partially in. There's still more to get done. Uh, and uh, still more work to be done up here yet, but yet uh, it look, I think it's looking really nice. So we thank uh, all those who helped out with that, who are getting everything installed. Uh, we thank God so much for that and for uh, beautifying his house in this way. Um, our order of service is in your bulletin this morning. Uh, it is Contemporary Sunday, and so we got the band and the choir back together, and uh, they'll be leading us in worship. And so our opening song this morning is, Come, Now is the Time for Worship. And let's go ahead and begin with that song. Before we start, I do want to make a quick announcement under the chorus, um, or sorry, uh, under, uh, yes, verse 2, verse 1, where it says choose, that will be praise. We'll sing praise there instead of choose, okay? Just so you know, and if you forget, it's all good. Just as you are, come, come. I'd like to invite everyone to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. For confession and absolution this morning, we speak together the words of Psalm 85. The psalm has two parts. The first part is a plea uh, of the psalmist to God. And the second is his announcement of God's promised salvation. And so we use this uh, Psalm 85 as we confess our sins and to hear God's forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. 
You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation. And put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. We confess, Lord, our God, that we have listened to the voices of Satan, the world, and our own desires. We have not loved you with all that we are and have, and we have not considered our neighbor's needs as important as our own. We can only throw ourselves on the mercy of your gracious court and ask for forgiveness that we may amend our sinful ways. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let him not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace face each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground. And righteousness. Yes, the Lord will give what is good. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him. And make his footsteps away. The steadfast love of the Lord and faithfulness of our God are endless. For the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for all of our sins, God declared us to be his own children and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. As a called in our days, give you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, holy and blameless before him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from God's, from God's blessings us, blessing us in Christ, choosing us in him before the foundation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for the peace of the whole world, in which all things work according to the counsel of his will. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for this holy house and all places where people hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord until we acquire possession of our inheritance. Amen. We remain standing for the hymn of praise, Everlasting God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, you granted your prophets strength to resist the temptations of the devil, and courage to proclaim repentance. Give us pure hearts and minds to follow your Son faithfully, even into suffering and death. The same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson of the seventh Sunday after uh, Pentecost comes to us from the prophet Amos, the seventh chapter. This is what the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The, the high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will uh, rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was a prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from the following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gradual. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory the epistle lesson this morning comes from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly, in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. To the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he has lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him also, in him you also, when you heard the word truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers at, at, are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah. And others said, he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. 
For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask of me, I will give you up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, please be seated as we sing our next hymn, How Great is Our God.
Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we, we live in a world that is divided, and it seems to get more and more divided each and every day. And, and as uh, we look at that, we see that it is a product of sin, it is a product of living in this fallen world. But the thing that uh, comes to mind for me is that sometimes this brokenness filters its way into the church. At times there, there can be divisions within the church, within a congregation. And that's what Paul is addressing in the letter to the Ephesians. There is division there, but yet he's showing that there is unity in Christ. Unity in our triune God. And so our uh, epistle lesson this morning is the introduction to that letter to the Ephesians. And Paul is focusing on the Trinity, on the, the salvation that all three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are working for you and for me. And so this morning I'd like to take us through this epistle lesson as we explore the, the greatness of our God. Paul begins here, at, right after the salutation, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons, through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, in which he has blessed us in the beloved. These opening verses are a prayer of praise to God the Father. It is it's God the Father that sent his Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. But yet, our salvation goes back further than all of that. Our text says here that the Father has chosen you. He has predestined you for salvation. He has predestined you. He has chosen you to be a member of his family. He has chosen you. He has predestined you for a glorious inheritance in Christ. And this is wonderful news. But oftentimes, this choosing of God, this predestination can often leave people confused. And we try to use our human reason to try to understand all this. And we start to make connections that Scripture never makes. For example, if God chooses us for salvation, if He predestines us to be saved, does God then choose others to not be saved? Does He choose others to not be saved and go to hell? And the answer is no. Predestination in the scriptures is never used in that sense. When God is talking about uh, predestining us, when God has chosen us from the, before the foundation of the world, it's always in the positive, always in the sense of your salvation in Christ. It's words that are meant to bring great comfort to you and to me that uh, even while we were still sinners, even while we were still dead in our trespasses and sins, well, even before all that, even before the foundation of the world, God has chosen you. That's great comfort. It's a comfort in knowing that in the craziness of all this world, that I belong to Him, that you belong to Him. That He is your God. He is your Father who loves you so very much that He has provided for you. And what has He provided for you? He's provided His Son, Jesus Christ. In Christ, you have been called to be holy and blameless. Now, God knows that you and I are not holy and blameless on our own. I look at my own life and I say, I am far short of all that. But yet, it's Christ's holiness uh, that comes in uh, down upon me and wraps around me so that as the Father sees me, as the Father sees you, He sees Jesus and His righteousness. And that righteousness has been given to you in holy baptism as, you, as you've been washed clean from all of your sins. But more than that, God also provides for you to be adopted 
into his family. What a wonderful, what a wonderful adoption that is. We, you know, when someone gets adopted into a human family, they're saved out of a bad situation, right? You know, their mom and dad may have uh, passed away and may have no other family members. God has adopted you and he has taken you out of this uh, simple world or, or the simple state that you and I are in. And he has made you his own and he's brought you into a family, into his family. And that family is called the church. And in the church, you and I are part of a, a glorious inheritance. We are part of God's family, which, which he will give us every spiritual blessing in Christ. That leads us to the next section of our scripture reading. This next section is a prayer to God the Son, to Jesus Christ himself. Uh, and starting at verse 7, it says, In him, that is in Christ, we have redemption for his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his pur purpose, with which he sent forth which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that, that we were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In Christ... We have, been, uh, we have received every spiritual blessing from God. We received the forgiveness of sins by which Christ came and died on the cross for us. And not only that forgiveness of sins, but we receive eternal life. We receive the grace of God, which God doesn't just sprinkle over us, but he lavishes upon us. You know, we have a God who is a generous God. He's not a stingy God. He has, he doesn't, uh, he's not a God that has a limited amount of forgiveness. But he's a God who has forgiven all things. He has forgiven your sins and the sins of the entire world through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. We have a generous God. A God whose love for you is boundless, who flows not only uh, into you and fills you, but fills you to overflowing. That love may flow out to others. But he's also given you an inheritance, an inheritance that is his, in which we also share it. And that's the inheritance of, of uh, eternal life. It's the inheritance of, of being, ruling all things, heaven and earth, with him. That's the inheritance. All the riches of heaven, everything that is Christ, belongs to you and to me, because as the church, we are the bride of Christ. You know, when you get married, uh, you know, what become, what's the wife's becomes the husband's, and what's the husband's becomes the wife's. Same thing here. All that is Christ belongs to you. More, uh, and as we, do, as we uh, move on in our text here, this last few verses are, is a prayer to the Holy Spirit. So in Christ you also, when you heard the word truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. So the Father sends his Son. The Father has chosen you from before the foundation of the world. He sends his Son who gives you everything, who has won salvation, who is your redemption. And now the Holy Spirit gives that to you. He gives it through the Word of God. He gives it to you in baptism as he continues to call people into God's family. And he is the guarantee the guarantee that what is promised will be ours when Jesus returns. That's what the text is talking about. 
What is Christ's belongs to you? What is God's belongs to you? And that's the greatness of being adopted into his family. And as we are, uh, have received all things in Christ, it, those are things, are things that we can share with others. As we call others to come to faith in this wonderful God who loves us and has brought us together. You see, the unity of the Trinity brings us together as well in the body of Christ. It heals divisions, it heals hurts, it heals all sorts of sorrows as we are healed through the forgiveness of Christ. And that's the message of our text today, that there is unity in Christ because Christ brings us healing. And it's the work of the Holy Trinity because the whole Trinity loves you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I invite you to please stand as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I ask you to remain standing as we bring our offerings forward. Let us go to God in prayer for the church around the world, the nations of this earth, and all who call to him in their various needs. Our Father in heaven, uphold and strengthen all families on the earth. Guide parents to teach their children all that you have done and promised. Grant your blessing wherever your people gather around your word and your sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. When the world seems to be winning and your holy name is used without thought, put a strong confession on the lips of church leaders and all your people everywhere. Grant that they may be used so that the reality of your power and grace shine forth to dispel fear and to bring many to faith in our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, extend your kingdom, O Lord, through the mission efforts around the world. Open voices to speak your word of judgment and grace, and open ears to hear your invitation to turn and to be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our raise up, we pray, leaders at all levels of government who will order society according to your will. Strengthen those who protect at home and those who defend abroad, so that our nations and all others find peaceful solutions to chaos and conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Hear the prayers of the, of the poor so that their daily needs of food, clothing, and shelter be available to them. Bless all who grow and distribute crops, all who seek to alleviate pain and suffering, and all who fund and build decent housing. Listen especially uh, for the needs of those that we know, especially including Rose Kerner, Larry Fleck Jr., Lois Ann Bartles, Larry Rathy, Arlene Bowling, uh, Agnes Tuma, Marlon Ebers, Eldon Bartles, Bruce Houghton, Sierra Garaki, Kevin Miesbach, Rihanna Pottsburg, Leroy Beathy, Sherry Sapp Strudheit, Herb Leaders, Karen McCoy, Arlo Miesbach, Mary Alice Grove, Alan DeYoung, Addie Colmeyer, 
Mindy Johnston, Josh Wilkins, Deb Lance, and Chris Kelly. Give them the healing, comfort, and hope that fits your gracious plans for them. Lord, in your mercy, you have graciously forgiven us for Jesus' sake. Open doors of opportunity for this congregation to be a welcoming place for people burdened with their past. Grant us to tell, uh, tell them what you have, have to say to them and to us, both words of forgiveness, peace, and hope. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant to you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, Sing, Sing, Sing.
Okay, thank you to the uh, praise band and the choir for uh, leading us in worship this morning. It sounded awesome as always, so thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we depart here this morning. Uh, again, uh, attendance cards, if uh, you haven't already done so, I'd like to remind you to please fill those out. Uh, those are important to help us uh, with keeping track of attendance and, and everything. So uh, it is a matter of pastoral care. And so I ask you to please uh, fill those out and give it to uh, the elder uh, usher on the way out this morning. Um, also, again, uh, thanks so very so much. Uh, uh, to everyone who has helped out with uh, taking everything down last week uh, in preparation for the carpet being laid down and for those who helped uh, put everything back and for all the cleaning that was done. Uh, there's still more to be done, uh, but thank you to all those who have organized it, the beautification committee, uh, the trustees and the elders and all those who have helped out. Uh, it's looking really great and uh, we're looking forward to seeing the finished product. and. Uh, we give thanks to God for all the gifts and the talents that he has given in this congregation to accomplish these tasks. Also, uh, please keep in mind, uh, in a couple of weeks, on July 25th, is our voters meeting, so please keep that in mind. There's a number of things on the agenda uh, uh, to uh, talk about. We have uh, uh, things to talk about in, uh, with the roof. We have some roof damage, and we need to talk about that. So, uh, if I'd like to really invite everyone to come to the voters meeting and to be able to participate with that. Um, also this week, um, I will be in the office on Monday, but I will be out, out of the office on Friday uh, this week. Um, I'll also be at my circuit meeting on uh, Tuesday morning and early afternoon. I'll be down in Humboldt. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, Amy has my cell phone or the elders have my cell phone. They could be able to get a hold of me as well. Um, stewardship uh, board will be meeting this uh, Thursday. Please keep that in mind at 4 o'clock. And um, let's see here, we got Meals on Wheels starting in August. So there's sign-up sheets in the back. So if you uh, can, I'd like to invite you to please uh, help out with the Meals on Wheels. And then uh, one other thing before I ask Luann to please come up for our, our, our uh, stewardship moment. Um, Pastor Paul Warnicke, uh will be installed today. Everyone is invited to come to Christ Lutheran in uh, Nebraska City. The, uh, it will be at 3 o'clock for installation, and uh, they invite you to stay uh, uh, for uh, a meal afterwards that they are providing. So uh, hopefully uh, we can go there and uh, to help them celebrate uh, receiving their new pastor. Okay, with that in mind, I turn things over to Luann. This stewardship moment is focused on service. Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. When we think of the military, we think of the men and women who serve in the armed forces. They serve us as they risk and even lay down their lives in order to protect us. That is why we honor them. The freedoms we enjoy today are because of their service to us. Apostle Paul talks about service in the context of the freedom that we have in Christ. Christ has set us free from the eternal punishment that was ours because of our sins, in order that we may be set free to follow him. Following Christ means following his example of service as he laid down his life for us. In thankfulness, we are free to serve one another in love. There are many ways in which we can serve one another. There are a wide variety of tasks to be done in the church and caring for the grounds. Please feel free to talk to one of the um, trustees to see if there's an area where you can help. Also, if you have any ideas how we can serve one another in our church and community, please feel free to visit with Pastor. Thank you for prayerfully considering how you can continue to serve Christ and his church. Thank you very much, Luann, for sharing us with us that stewardship moment. And God's richest blessings to each and every one of you as we use our gifts and talents to God's for God's people and the community and to praise the glory of our Father.
sing, sing, sing.